Turkey has blamed the suicide bombings that killed 100 people in Ankara at the weekend on Islamic State. But Kurdish opposition leaders have alleged government complicity. The bombs have sharply raised tensions against a backdrop of the war in neighbouring Syria and Turkey's general election next month. To discuss this complex issue, I'm joined by Rula Khalaf, the FT's foreign editor. Rula, what's the significance of these terrible bombings for both Turkey and its political situation and the broader, very dangerous regional situation? I think you need to think of this in two ways. One is that there's a very serious spillover effect now from Syria in that you've had a major terrorist attack by ISIS. The other, of course, is the domestic political element here. Uh, this was a rally uh, by uh, a pro-Kurdish party, a pro-Kurdish party that uh, Erdogan the president of Turkey wants to downsize in the elections that are coming up in just two weeks. And the people feel that, the people who were there feel that there was very little security. Uh, and some of them are accusing the government of complicity here. And so what the result of all this is an increased polarization in Turkey just two weeks ahead of the elections and uh, an almost now constant state of turmoil. So what are the prospects for the election next month? Well, I think that um, the president was hoping that after the first, the election that we had um, just a couple of months ago, uh, in which uh, his party, AKP, lost the majority, that now in, in this election in November, because they weren't able to form a government, uh, that he would regain the majority. In fact, he wants even more than that. He wants to be able to have enough votes in order to uh, beef up uh, the role of, of the presidency. Uh, I think that if you ask most analysts, they would say that given the situation today, given this polarization, this gamble is not going to pay, pay off and that more likely you will end up with the very same result results that you had in the last election. If that is the case, we have to bear in mind here that Turkey is a member of NATO, it borders Syria, it borders Iraq, it borders Iran, it's one of the most pivotal states in a very dangerous region. How are uh, Turkey's allies, the United States particularly, and the other NATO allies looking at this? Can you, can you just explain a little bit what this instability in Turkey itself means in the context of all the difficult problems that are going on around it? I think you know one of one of the main issues is that Syria was until two, I'd say probably three years ago still a contained conflict. Now it has been spilling over not only in Jordan in Lebanon but now far more importantly in many ways in Turkey. There's also a lot of concern I think about the way that the current government in, in Turkey, the current leadership has handled matters because one of the key issues that's, that's going on right now is the breakdown of the ceasefire with the Kurdish militias, the PKK. And I think that you had a ceasefire for a long time that at least maintained a level of, uh, of security and stability and even raised hopes that there would be a long-term peace. That's completely broken down now. And some people would say that uh, it's been quite deliberate on the part of the leadership. Some people are now talking about Turkey perhaps becoming ungovernable if there's a stalemate in the election next month like we had in the last time around and with, as you say, Turkey's embroilment in, in the conflict in Syria. That's a pretty serious situation. Absolutely. I think this is the main fear, that you end up in a constant state of turmoil, of tensions, of terrorist attacks and, you know, the army uh, fighting um, the PKK. And you're not able to form a government because you don't have, uh, an, you, know, you don't have the sort of setup that you really want. And that is a very, very serious issue. Rula Kalaf, thank you very much indeed.